Tonight, we'll take a look at the events that have unfolded following the inauguration of the Oshun State Governor, Ademola Adeleke of the PDP, as past and present administrations trade blames over 407 billion naira debt. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. The People's Democratic Party in Oshun State and the Opposition All Progressives Congress have continued their war of words over the state's 407.32 billion naira debt portfolio. In a statement by its acting chairman, Dr. Adekunle Akindele, he berated the ex-governor Adeboyega Oyetola for alleged deceitful conduct during his handling of the state's finances. The PDP, however, commended the state governor, Senator Ademola Adeleke, for his transparency and accountability in the management of the state affairs. The party also claimed that the Oshun debt portfolio has long been shrouded in secrecy with negative consequences for the state's finances, investor perceptions, and the general well-being of the people, and that Oyetola remains the source of financial misgovernance uh, wrought in the state. The Oshun State Government has also cleared the air on the alleged withdrawal of security detail attached to Governor Ademola Adeleke by the Department of State Services, even though now they say it has been resolved, but we'll find out how it is. The group further alleged that DSS took the step after Adeleke made unguarded utterances before the personnel deployed to work with him. But when contacted, the spokesperson for the governor, Olawale Rashid, who is here with us today, said there was no crisis regarding the governor's security team. There was also a war of words between the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressives Congress over an alleged non-remittance of the revenue due to Oshun State through the mining sector, with the PDP accusing the opposition party in the state of collusion with a mining company to deny the state its revenue. On the feud between the past and current administration in Oshun State, we will be discussing with a spokesperson to the Oshun State Governor, Malam Olawale Rashid, and also we'll have on set Olufemi Lawson, a political analyst. Now, welcome to Plus Politics, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's be yeah, let's begin with you, Rashid. What is the state of things in Oshun State as regards the indebtedness? We don't want to hear from other sources, but you are an inside source. What's the state? Thank you very much. You know, we took over from the previous government without proper handing over. There was no transition committee. So when we got put in, a query was issued to the Accountant General of the state to come and come up with what are the level of liabilities and indebtedness. And it came up with details of indebtedness running to 331 billion plus 76 billion, which is about salaries, pensions, and insurance matters, uh, adding up to 400 and something plus. We now decided that what should we do with this figure? Should we just keep it and continue governance? No, internally, His Excellency now said no. Let me go and report back to the owners of the state. Uh, and the traditional rulers in particular, who are apolitical, who are non partition and who are fathers of the state, in fact, the owners of the state. So we call a meeting and brief them on what they found on ground. And, you know, we took over from Governor Yutola, and it's just normal to let the world know that this is what we got from the former governor, I mean, the former administration. Uh, even though proper handing over was not done, but the essentially choose the part of transparency, accountability, and open governance. So say, let me open up the book to the owner of the state so that they will see what I find on ground as I also start my own tenure. So the state of the uh, of uh, situation now, the financial situation is that also is in, is in a mess, financial mess. And while we were talking about the 400 billion matter, we discovered another 100 million dollars. Uh, there was a loan on water matters and all those. That one too was not disclosed to us. 
Uh, then contractual debt, debt whole contractor, you know, this contractor finance project that Governor Utola anchored a lot. That one too, we are summing it up. That one is also running to almost 150 billion. So what, what I'm trying to say in effect is that the account is in the red and uh, we are not after anybody. What we are after is transparency, accountability, and good governance. Opening the book to the people of Oshun State. Okay. Come to we'll come back to that uh, when if the, we have the time to discuss these um, liabilities and every other thing. But um, as a John, um, an analyst, Lawson, a, a neutral analyst, do you think these accusations are in line, or do you think they are blown out of proportion? Because as an analyst, you must have been there and following events of the previous administration, and now these accusations have come. Are they utterly the way they are? Yeah, thank you. Beyond being an analyst, uh, I'm also fortunate to have been very much involved in the political atmosphere in Oshun State, and coincidentally, I have worked closely with my senior brother, Malab Rashid, on some of the political issues in Oshun State before now. And I want to say that what Governor Ademola Adeleke owes the people of Oshun State today, most importantly, is the sincerity of purpose that its administration was bringing to form. It is very unfair and insincere for anyone. I had actually not taken so seriously some of the positions that have been flying around the year over the last couple of days until I read that statement by the ruling party in Russia today, the PDP, where the statement claimed that the root of the current state of indebtedness could be traced to the administration of Governor Buego Ikola. This is very insincere. This is unexpected. And I guess this is least expected for anyone who has been in Russia State over the last 12 years. The truth that the administration of Governor Lake Lake must be courageous enough to state is that the indebtedness of Russia State to be irrespective of how much it is. $407, $100 million, $50 billion, or whatever, it's not the last four years of Governor Etola. My Ebo, Malam Rashid, we've worked together on this before, you know, the last four years that Governor Etola took over. I know how much of, you know, write-ups, I know how much of political interventions we made during the administration of the former Governor Raul Farebe Shola, which really is the foundation for today's mess. For anyone to make any attempt at accelerating the real culprit, which is Governor, the former Governor Raoul Farrakwashala, and place this burden of debt of a true state today on the last four years of Governor Etola will mean insincerity. And I think if we are genuinely concerned about addressing why the ordinary people of, the, of a true state have been put into so much debt, like we are currently experiencing today, then we must trace it beyond the last four years. And that is nothing but the truth. Tracing 407 billion, 100 million dollars, and every other debt to the last four years of Governor Yitola will mean Governor Leneke is not ready to probe this, you know, among us debt of the state. And I think he should be ready to do this by probing beyond the last four years of Governor Yitola. To the least intelligent person in the state, even to the deaf and the blind, everyone knows that. The Arab Shola administration plunged Osho into, an, into the kind of debt that the state will have generations to pay. And unfortunately, also, the administration of Governor Etola did cover up rather than exposing the indebtedness of the state under Arab Shola, did cover it up to the, from the people, possibly because of their you know, political party affiliation. And that is also unfair to the people of Osho State. But for an administration that has all the intelligence around it and all the human and you know, material resources should be courageous enough to come out and tell the people of Oshu State and the general public about who and who actually incurred this four and seven billion you know naira debt and some other that we are beginning to you know get informed about. But it is insincere on the part of Oshu PDP and this administration to narrow it to the last four years. Okay, um, what a way to begin this program. I know that Rashid wants to uh, answer to that. Uh, to let, let respond. Me, let just, me just, just, some things there. Okay, 
briefly, Let me please. Tell you, about something. Yeah. you see, we came on board without a proper handing over. We searched the cupboard to discover what debt, what liability. We took over from a man. Our contact is, is with that man. Our contact is, is not with who has come before. And that is one. Secondly, this man that we took over from happened to be the chief of staff to demand the other man, the other man. In other words, as a chief of staff, he was right in the middle or the driver's seat. So we, we don't want to probe into all who is responsible, who is not responsible. What we all should do is to come up and tell them, even though there was no handing over properly, but this is what we find in the household. Uh, our past governor, this is what we find in his cupboard. It's like for that former governor to now come and say, oh, that thing you find in my cupboard was put there by another person. So we, we've been very transparent. And that's why I say, Governor Deliki is not after anybody. No, 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 no. It's about openness. Uh, I'm happy to say this. We've been involved deeply in the matter for long. We've, we've had many struggles that we've passed through. But the reality on ground is that somebody also cover, you see, and it took Bebolaja Kodali, Afezo Basile. Somebody who stole, somebody who stole something. Eh? He's not actually the culprit. Though. The person that collected it and hid it for him is even more guilty. But we are not even into that. We, we laid the foundation for good governance by opening up the book of Oshun to the people, to let people know that this is the depth we find on ground. And now we are starting our five point agenda 100 days program, six month program, one year program. But we'll, before we start, it, we'll get to, we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to the five point agenda. We'll get to the five point agenda. But um, yeah. uh, I'm just, I'm just curious, uh, Lawson, when you said that the previous administration covered for the, the one before it, and I'm mm -hmm. glad you said it was not fair to the people of Oshun and all that, it, because it sounded like there was some kind of collusion, there was some kind of uh, um, mm -hmm. cooperation between, like someone say, there's honor among thieves. I don't know what, if that is what happened in that situation. But we also hear that apart from the money that was taken maybe that you have said that uh, came from the previous administration before the one that we are uh, talking about today, uh, there was a loan that was taken after the present or the previous administration lost election that was held in uh, June or July. So, July. yes. So, how can you explain that away? See, I'm not a spokesperson of the Oyetola administration, but I'm knowledgeable enough I haven't been involved in you know public advocacies you know and all sort of uh, governance activities to know that it is not enough to just roll out figures and statistics without details that the Oriental administration took 18 billion naira after July is very simple. All that is needed from the Adelika administration is that on July so 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 after July 16 governorship election, you tell our administration approach so 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 financial institution and okay. took a lot of so so amount. See, it is not enough because also it's a state of intellectuals, mm. also also it's a state of highly politically conscious citizens. So it is not enough to begin to roll out figures without details. The response from the administration has been that this so-called 18 billion naira loan was taken over a period of six months that is three billion on a monthly basis it was a support from the federal government i'm not mm -hmm. sure it will come from any bank or other financial institution than the federal government so it is not left for the identity administration to say that this 18 billion wasn't from the federal government and it was taken from so so financial institution and these are the conditions attached it truly is claimed to be reporting on the basis of the available record. So, you see, we should not be treated as kindergartens. Why well, you just roll out figures without details, and you think people should follow, you know, who can I think I know? The administration must be sincere and courageous to tell the people how and where those loans were taken. It's not enough to roll out figures. Yeah, said, let, okay. let, me, let me rephrase. Okay, can I quickly, let me give you the, let me give you that fact. 
Uh, can I go ahead? Okay, you go ahead. Now, you know he has admitted now that actually 18 billion naira has he? Was taken, but it was, but it was from federal government. Now, no, you know, a lot of other states. Let, let me explain. It. Hey, let me explain it. Now, if you take money from federal government, is it a gift? Is a loan? I know, I'm aware of it. Everybody is aware. Now, in other words, between July to November, a total of 18 billion was taken. Omipina has admitted it. No, Omipina has admitted it, but he says it's from federal government. Now I ask, is it a gift from federal government? No, it's a loan. It's a loan that you have to pay back. There is no dispute that it is a loan. In fact, Omipina admitted that. But he said it was not the way we put it. Now I ask myself, okay, a loan of 18 billion was taken, but you are disputing the way we put it. The money from FD is not a dash, it's not a gift. You have to pay back. Now, if you collect 18 billion after you fail the election. No, it was not given to the No, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, say you are not. Uh, okay, okay, Gen you know gentlemen, 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 just a moment, just a moment. Let's. You are not. You are an analyst. Gentlemen. Inform the citizens correctly. <laughs> no, 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 no. Omi Pina said it that truly the money was taken, but it's from FD. But it's a loan. A loan is a loan. And it is scandalous for you to take 18 billion. Okay, okay. Gentlemen, you know, gentlemen, gentlemen, just, okay. just a moment, just a moment. I, I like where it's going. Uh, sometimes um, mm. things happen like this and then we find out. I know, Lawson, that you may not be a chieftain of the APC, but you said you have done extensive work. And now, today, you're playing the devil's advocate. So I'll be asking you questions <laughs> that <laughs> might seem like, okay, you are APC. But just take that uh, as it is. I'm, I'm curious. Even if loans or debts came from the previous administration before the one of Oyetola, uh, the question is, the Aregbe Shola administration was APC. The Oyetola administration was APC. And like you have admitted, and like you have uh, admitted, they covered off these uh, loans and these debts that uh, the state accrued. Now, what did he do? What did Oyetola do in that space of time that he took over office to make sure that some of these debts are paid or anything is done about the debts? Or did he just wait for the next administration to come and inherit the debts? Did he ever do anything from your findings? No, it, it, it is a Can I answer that question? No, no, no. Lawson first. Lawson first, please. It is a public knowledge. And Mala Rashid is aware because, like I told you, we work together on a number of times on this. Mm. What the Oyetola administration spent the greater part of that four years doing was paying back those immobile debt incurred by the Irrational administration. It is on record, these are public you know, you know, information, that there are times that monthly allocations to our true states from the Federation account were in minus. That Oshu was not even getting what was statutorily due to it because of the deductions for debts that have been taken by the. See, it's a record that the Arab National Administration was such that was such a monumental, you know, I don't want to use unprintable words here, for Oshu states. So, for the greater part of the four years, the administration of Oyetola was practically paying debts incurred by the Arab National Administration. And these are public records, which my own body also know. So, it was it was not hidden that the administration was paying them, but what we had against the Oyetola administration was the fact that it covered up so much, you know, for the indebtedness of the state incurred by Arab Shola, maybe for partisan you know reasons, but I think it was not fair to the people of Oshuse. The people of Oshuse should have been made earlier enough to be aware of how much you know the Arab Shola administration left. And look at the statement of defense by this same Arab Shola. You know, former governor claiming that the debts were liquidated by who? Liquidated at what point? You know, these are the states that took so much loan, and eventually there was nothing significant to show for it. Yeah, um, can I comment now? Yes, I should go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Now, you see, let, let me situate this matter very well. APC took loan, APC plunged Oshun into indebtedness, APC ruined Oshun. 
Now, whether you talk of the man we took over from, that's Governor Utola, or you talk of the predecessor, the first is that they belong to the same party. That is one. Secondly, we are all in the know. It's a public knowledge. The chief of staff to Arabe Shola for eight years, powerful chief of staff, producer, powerful chief of staff. The no, driver no, no, of the system. You, you know, you know when you when you are when you are in driver. Let me Let me. No, I have the floor. No, I have the floor. I have the floor. Now, I'm I'm trying to situate this the, the, the scenario. Now, you took over from your boss, and like you Lawson has admitted, you cover up your boss because you were part of the mess. You, it's not as if you cover it all for just partition interest, but, you, but because you are on the driver's seat, when all those things happen. But you know what? We don't want to go into that. You know what we are bothered about? is we, we are so eager, we are on our five-point agenda, but we told us some people should know the truth. Amapi, Anakbe, and Oyotola uh, people are hiding it out, but also people now know the truth. If somebody cover up a thief, the person is also what? A thief. Oh, now, well. In this scenario now, our problem is not with anybody. Our responsibility is to assure people. We have delivered the message to them. They fired us clearly. The new one that we have discovered now, we are going to table it before them this week again. In fact, big news coming you this week. Super big losses. Losses. Super it's big news. Okay. Okay. I think most information is not with details. Okay. We are losing. You don't worry about the figure. What time were these laws taken? Who took them? Let us know. It's not enough to okay. bring up Nothing. Okay, okay, let me quickly answer it. Let me quickly yes. answer that. You know, yes. most of these figures are not coming from us. Now, there is a, what do you call this Freedom of Information Act. The Accountant General's Office. No, listen, the Accountant General's Office, people have access. We query the Accountant General. He released all the figures. I ask people that. If we have done so much, this is not really like this you. Oh, let me know now. Let me learn now. <laughs> you know what? As a civil society person, you are also free to inquire and to request for those data. It's not in our custody. We are not covering up anything. The governor came and said, No, I must open up the book. I won't cover up anything. No contractor. We have discovered over 100 billion old contractors. And that was within four years. They call it contractor finance something. And they come up and say, it's not a loan. I say, ah, somebody is financing projects on behalf of the state. The state must pay back. It's still a debt. So please, we, we, well, we are so eager about the five point agenda. We want to deliver on our promises. But we are opening the book. Let the old world see. Okay. Okay, in, in fairness, in fairness, um, Mr. Rashid, in fairness to the previous administration, I'd just like to ask you this. Um, when you went into govern, government uh, without any handing over, no transition committee that was set by the previous administration to hand over to you and tell you what is there for Oshun and in Oshun, you went ahead and you were looking for only the liabilities. What happened to maybe the assets that Oshun State has? Why didn't you really talk about that? Why haven't we heard anything about the assets that may have been uh, built, as it were, in the course of the four years? Why are you just concerned about uh, only... Let me, let, me quickly answer, let me quickly answer you. Yes. The former governor said he left 14 billion naira, And his commissioner came on here three days ago and gave account of those where those monies are. But, but you now know, like Lossi said, Lossi is a very educated, very enlightened state. Most of this money were dedicated project money from multilateral institutions. MDG money, uh, uh, microfinance money. So they had up small, small, small money and they said, this is what we are living. Most of this money are not expendable. They are, their money, the governor, the governor cannot touch. So we choose to actually, you know, when you talk of uh, asset, what is the asset in Osho? Where is the asset? The roads are bad. Let's institutions done. Uh, just talk of it. Go around Osho. You will see on that development, staring you in the face. Go to our cities. And we, are, we hold 400 billion plus. It is scandalous. It is scandalous. How do you talk of asset when you are going almost 400 billion uh, almost 410 billion. So it's, it's what asset? 
we are in, in red. Also, he's in crisis financially. To hear also from Mr. Lawson, what you think about what Mr. Rashid said? Is Oshun really the picture that was painted by Malam Rashid? Lawson, please. Six development every you know every state afar to develop beyond what we currently even the Nigeria state as a whole. But I think when you compare the last four years of the UHL administration averagely to the performance of the average Nigerian government, the governor rather, you realize that uh, the administration performed very well. Today, it is a this issue that in the public record, or she's one of the very few states in Nigeria that has basic health centers in all the wards, over 300 or thereabouts in Oshu states, across the states. And if you look at the investment of the government in infrastructure, when you talk about you know, city center roads, you know, some inter local government roads, even some roads that are very critical to movement of people within the states. and you must also give one credit, even though we don't like commending governors for doing ordinarily what should be their responsibility. You realize that for the eight years that Governor Rebeshola was in the Sajo, Oshu was always in the front pages of the newspaper, Oshu was always in the news headlines for indebtedness to the civil servant. Oshu was known as a state where civil servants don't get paid after 30 days. But the administration of what he that took. You know, the last four years that he spent to correct that anomaly, and that was why for four years there were no industrial disputes as far as, you know, government civil servant relationship was concerned in Oshu State. And Oedola took Oshu back to track, ensured that pensioners get, you know, were getting paid, civil servants were getting their you know, salaries as a when due, all like what, you know, became the culture under the eight years of Governor Rebeshola. So if you say this is not development, if you say this is not progress, then we must have to wait and see what the administration of Governor Itala will offer because it is even still too early to assess a governor that a government that is less than 30 days in office. So now we have seen a transition from a culture of indebtedness to civil servants to pensioners to a culture where constantly civil servants were paid, pensioners were paid, basic centers were fun the basic health centers were functioning across the state. You know, look, the roads were being constructed and some other interventions embarked upon by the administration. So it is not left for us to begin to look at how we cannot compare this to whatever achievement will be recorded by the Adelaide administration. But to say that there was no improvement from the eight years that you know Alec Bashala governed or she state would not be unfair. Or would not be fair rather. I, I don't know if this is related, but let can me... I can I comment on that, please? Okay. Uh, my brother Lawson uh, is actually acting like a spokesperson for Yutola. Let me quickly fought some of the things he said. The health centers he talk about, we've gone around all the health centers. In fact, it's in, it's, they were in they are in very sorry state. In fact, the governor has gone around more than twenty health centers. But they are available. Go, let, let, let me let me go. Go. But they are available. Let me go. No, they are in bad shape. They are in bad shape. That's what we are saying. And the city roads that you talk about, just has anybody living in Oshun, go around Oshun cities. Even Ilefe, Ilesha, Iwo, the city roads are in Shambu in, in bad state. And when we talk of salary pension, uh, my uncle, Oshun is holding 52 billion pension areas. Oshun is only 25 billion salary areas. Oh, this is, this is what you tell her hand over to us. Now, oh, you know, let, you know, let, let me, no, 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 let, nothing, nothing, will you, will you allow me, will you allow me, to, when I, please, please let him land, I'll I give see, you the chance to, you allow to, to say to what you need to say. Eh? Is you God, you're my brother, I don't want okay. to engage you much now. Eh? Now, what me I'm saying is that, as of today, because Lossi is saying salary is being paid regularly, pension is being paid, also he's sold 52 billion naira in pension. Many pensioners are dying. Also, it's all 25 billion salary areas. People are in trouble. See, city center road, just come to Shugo. When you remove those few major roads, just go in. Come to my town, you walk. The city roads are bad. The city roads are bad. Where is the development? In fact, when you hold 400 billion, the question is, we should see the evidence. When you go to Akwa Ibom, 
You go to Cross River, you go to rivers and all those. You see what this money was spent on. There is nothing, no evidence in notion. Also, it's, 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 we are in crisis of underdevelopment. It's, this is we remove politics. Let's remove politics. That is the reality on ground. Who is responsible? Nothing we say is not to It is Arabic Shola. Well, to us, APC is responsible. We took over from a man who stole our mandate in 2018 before we got it back. But the man to us is responsible. We took over from him. This Osho is in crisis of development. Please send your correspondent to come and do online survey. I will pay for it to come and do online videoing and reporting. Grand Osho, I will, I will foot the bill. You will discover Osho is in trouble. And we are owing 400 billion plus. Okay. Now, uh, we'll, we'll they say it's not to Yetola. We'll hold so it. one minute. We'll, they say it's not to Yetola. I was wondering. You are part and parcel of everything that has happened in the last 15 years. And you claim you are not culpable. Because you are also culpable, you run away from doing proper transition. Wrap up on you that, please. You refuse to actually constitute transition committee. So, Lossi should not defend these people. They know what they did. You people are civil society. You are doing your job. I, I applaud some of the things you people did. But don't, don't hold brief for them. Also, people are hungry. Don't let them be angry with you. Okay. Uh, well, um, it's, it's quite balanced. Now, um, because we might just run out of time without discussing another very important thing, let's, let's shift a little bit. If we have more time, we'll come back to the state of Oshu. I'm not talking about the new name that you got, but <laughs> the state of Oshu uh, and uh, whatever it is. Why are you using state of Oshu? No, no, no. The condition of Oshu. Let me use another word. I'm not oh, saying oh, I'm oh, not oh, saying oh, as oh, the new oh, the oh, new oh, name. Oh, By oh, the way, I wanted to ask that, but um, let's leave it. Um, you were talking about uh, the five point agenda of the new administration, and I'm interested in that. If Oshun has to move from where it is now, according to how you're describing it, maybe this five point agenda will have something in it for Oshun. Would like you to work us through that five point ad agenda so that we get to know what we can hold you tomorrow. Uh, you know, because you make a promise and if you cannot deliver it, we can use that against you tomorrow. So tell Thank us what much. this five-point agenda the five is. The five-point agenda, I know me and Lawson will agree on this because you actually know what we have at hand. The five-point agenda is basically, you know, also, suffer, also is suffering from one major issue, lack of focus on workers' welfare. This administration wants to focus on workers' welfare in terms of regular payment of salary, resolving the pension crisis and among others. The second agenda is boosting also economy. Now, also economy is so shallow, there's no money in the system. We're working on revolving loan schemes that will actually ensure that money actually revolve around within also economy, so that our people can run businesses, artisans, market women and men. The third one is people-oriented uh, infrastructure policy, labor-intensive infrastructure policy. Most of our infrastructure, most of them will be direct labor with just technical support. The whole essence of it is to engage our people in road construction, in renovation, expansion of facilities. And the fourth one has to do with the question of education, health, and of course, women, youth, in terms of development, in terms of empowering them. And the last one is agro industrialization. Also, is blessed agriculturally. We want to focus on developing the processing industry so that our people can hand more money up and down. Those are just the summary. But we have now expanded it. We've programmed it into 100 days program, six month program, one year program. And the whole essence of it is to ensure that also economy actually develop and grow so that our people who are living in poverty, the situation can change. Education, health, roads can be in proper shape. These are just the synopsis. Well, we would like to know the, the specifics of all, of all the things that you are saying, especially in, the, in ag agriculture and uh, industrialization yes. and education. So what are some of the specifics in the things that you have just mentioned? Lawson, I know that I'll come to you to assess this government, even though they are less than two months. But uh, we, are let me month, we are less than a month. Mm. 
We are just here. We are this, this is the second, third week. Yeah. Now, you are talking of specifics. You, you, you talked Let about, you talk, you saw, excuse me, you talked about um, 100 days and one year and all that. Uh, hey, and you are spending yeah. almost a month uh, fighting the other um, government, uh, the SYL administration. And I'm wondering whether you're not taking out of this 100 days. How can you achieve the aim for 100 days? Let me quickly correct something. We are not fighting previous administration. What we are doing is house cleaning. <clears throat> if you don't clean the house, you cannot build it on the rock of the past. That is one. Then in governance, there is multitasking. The fact that we are exposing corruption and ensuring that the people know the truth does not mean we are not working. We already we are already on our hundred day program, and the hundred day program covers tech innovation, covers uh, education, and most of our schools are in bad shape. So ongoing plans for rehabilitation, ed centers that were supposedly rehabilitated in those days were not. We are taking it off to ensure that we innovate ed centers and equip them properly. So we have an hundred day program that also cover agri, the vitalization of the agri settlement, among others. So we are not fighting previous government. We, we should remove that word. But what we are doing, in effect, is to actually open up the book, let people know what we meet on the ground, and how we are proceeding. Okay. That's all? For the 100 days? No, program. I'm, I'm cutting it short, but, because I, I don't want to take... Uh, because I know I want to cover more ground. Uh, okay, okay. Let me let me go to Lawson in case you have something mm -hmm. to respond to all that uh, Mr. Rashid has said uh, just recently. Well, for the five point program, very beautiful. Osho is an ambitious state. The people have very huge expectations. People are looking forward to you know this government, you know, trying to come and turn their fortune around for the positive and. Like I said, it is too early to assess whatever this government will become. This is just less than 30 days. But the most important thing is that the government must remain consistent to its policies. It is not enough for us to get to the 100 days, the six months and one year, and begin to get excuses. It is the ambition of every progressively minded person that this government is able to live up to the promises it has made, just like we are hearing now. So for me, it is a very ambitious plan, very laudable, beautiful, but it must go beyond the papers. It must go, be, must go beyond the rhetorics, and the government must be seen to be implementing these plans from now on, not waiting you know, for the 106 months or, or you know, one year you know, you know, anniversaries before we know what the government has been able to do. So it's, it's very ambitious programs. And I wish the government would leave what it is. But you, as a member of the civil society, civil society uh, what plans do you have to make sure that they are on their toes? Because you can't just take a chance and say, after four years, let me assess you and ask you questions. Do you have plans? Yes. We will continue to engage them. We engage the previous government. Fortunately, myself and Madam Rashid, my boy, for eight good years, we kept the Arabian Shalom government on its toes. We were very much alive, you know, pointing out the faults of that government. It is also on record that some of us were very critical of some of the programs of the Middle past administration. So when people find it strange that we commend some of the, you know, progress made by the internal administration, we don't really get worried because we are known to have condemned where the government didn't do well. And we will also do the same for the delegate government. Whenever the government is doing well, we will speak out. And whenever the government is not meeting up to the expectation of the people, we will never be stopped. Because if the Arabian administration could not stop us, no other government, I think, will be able to do that. Because it is in the interest of the people that we keep you know, talking about what government does right or not, then keeping government on its own, so that on, on the long run, the people can be the biggest beneficiary. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let me chip in a word. I thank uh, Lossi for actually commending our agenda and uh, we look forward to working with the civil society group. Like you said, we have, our agenda is very ambitious and very detailed and costed with deliverables. That's why I said 100 days, three months, six months, and uh, we will not give excuses. We ensure that we follow through. We don't want to give excuses. That's why 
the governor has to open up the books. You know, you know when you are dealing with a very highly literate society like Oshun, you have to be open to them because our people are very understanding. So they now know, oh, the background is so, 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 so level of liabilities. Then going forward, they will now see our program, how we will be very innovative in terms of addressing the challenges we met on ground, in terms of implementing our own program, and in terms of touching the life of the people. And, and you know, I said something. Governor Dileke has five principles underlining, underpinning his administration. There are five. The first one is open governance, which most civil society people will like. And of course, good governance, very, very important. Government must be accountable, must be transparent. And that's why we are instituting what we call a Pade Imale, the meeting of light, when we meet stakeholders from across board. So we are poised to deliver on our, on, on our promises and uh, we'll work with civil society in terms of tracking and evaluation. I'm, I'm just concerned about um, how you would um, make the money to actualize this dream that you have. You are already indebted and you talked about the fact that we'll, maybe we'll go into that again that another, let me, let me accu an, another accusation was that financing. yeah let me talk on financing you know when we came in that's another thing we've discovered a lot of revenue leakages a lot of revenue leakages but what we are doing is to plug those leakages and reform the revenue collection system can you imagine revenue collectors are handling more than the state that is what we met on ground. Revenue collectors are handling more than the state. A lot of consultants who are not supposed to be there are there making the state dry. So what we are working on is to block the leakages first. When you do that successfully, you hand more for the state. Then we have more resources to spend on the implementation of the five-point agenda. We are also doing uh, mining sector reform. We discover a lot of illegal mining, illegal diversion, and all those. We are working with relevant agencies, both locally and nationally, to ensure that also got its dues from the solid mineral sector. So funding, financing will be very innovative and will deliver on our promises. I, I, I'm getting confused. When you talk mining, is it not supposed to be a federal government affair? You see, that's the confusion. People, you know, it's a federal uh, sector, but people don't read the law very well. There is royalty payment to the federal government by the mining companies and the mining comp after the royalty collection the federal government will pay 30 percent derivation to the state it is clear it's a federal government policies in law and all those that is one there is also community uh, development responsibility that all mining company hold the communities in other words the state where you are operating in ocean ocean water is polluted our people are dying now but the mining companies they have to be responsible. They have to pay for it. And we also look at the operation of the major mining companies. We discover a lot of loopholes. And His Excellency has contacted relevant federal agencies to look into all this. So it's a federal responsibility, but with state partnership. It is there in law. Okay. Let me go to, let me go to Lawson. Um, I'm glad that you said that this ideas, these five points of the present administration, they have very lofty ideas and uh, they could, if they could achieve them, it would be good for the state of Oshun. But now there's a lingering, will I call it crisis? Something lingering in the courts. Uh, the governor, Oyetola, is asking that the election be nullified. What did you observe in Oshun as the election went on? Does he have a case or not? Well, you know, this case is before the court, and it is going to be important that we allow the court to actually decide, you know, on this. But we should also say this, that uh, for a governor who over 280,000 citizens of the state voted for, you cannot say it is wrong for him to have approached, you know, the tribunal to seek redress, especially when... Of course, you understand that in Nigeria elections, there are always one controversy or the other, especially when you look at the conduct of politicians. So for Governor Yetola to have approached the tribunal, this is very much in order. Governor Delicate did this in 2018, even though he didn't get you know, what he wanted from the court. So let us you know, wait and see where this uh, quest by former Governor Yetola will also land. And I also want to add to what uh, Mala Rashid has said, 
about how the state intend to you know, finance all these, these ambitious programs beyond you know plugging revenue leakages, you know, getting external sources like federal education and the like. It's also important that uh, we let our people know that the governor during the campaigns also made it known to assure people that he has a wide network of international connections <laughs> and they have friends and associates that bring dollars and pounds and everything. So, or should that, be... That, that, that's his misinterpretation. <laughs> it is misinterpretation. He said, what he said at the campaign rally was that he will use his contact with his friends yeah. at home and abroad to bring in investment into Oshun. But yeah. so uh, you know the opposition media yeah. now. So yeah. it was twisted and he never said anything like that. But what he said is that he's going to use his own contact, go to Europe and America to bring in investment into Oshun. And he has started that. He has started doing that. Yeah, thank you for it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's 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 look at let's look at education for instance. You talked about renovation, but it goes beyond just a renovation of schools or uh, in health yeah. and the renovation of uh, um, health facilities and all that. What specifically is it going to do apart from renovation that will improve the educational status of Oshun State? You know, in education there are three factors that affect outcome. The first one is place of learning. The second one is the the teachers, their conditions. And of course, the third one is the, the learning environment, the learning equipment. Now, we've gone around, based on our study, both before the election, during the transition committee work, we discovered these three are majorly lacking in Oshun. Teachers, they are having issues. Learning material, learning equipment is an issue. And of course, we, we, we've not instituted some programs. The first one is, apart from renovating the place of learning, to make sure it's conducive, we are also instituting what we call um, uh, alumni investment partnership. Uh, alumni association is so common, but Governor Deleke is now introducing a system whereby alumni will actually be partners in terms of uh, upgrading facilities in their schools. We are also reforming the question of uh, PTA, PTA used to be a very passive system. In, within secondary and primary school, we are trying to now make it a bit formal so that parents will have a role to play, not just like attending meetings like they used to do. And we're also trying, introducing what we call a um, male teacher's call. Now, we discover we have a lot of program in terms of youth empowerment for our graduates and all those. We are running a program that governor will unfill soon. We call it a male teacher's call which will involve young graduates who are volunteers to teach across our school. So we have a lot of, in fact, our ambition, our target is to take us in terms of national rating to the, between number one to number 10, instead of almost 30 something that we are here now. So we have specific plan with deliverables and MIE alongside it to make sure how we are performing. Okay, well, um... Let me just talk to Lawson. Uh, Lawson, you have the opportunity now to talk on national television to Oshun State Governor. What are you expecting him to do? I will want to say that uh, Governor Deleke must allow his programs you know, for Oshun State to be in line with the aspiration of the people. A lot of times, Governors have resorted into implementing programs that are not intended with the aspiration of the people. So the government must open the line, the culture of communication with the people and deliver programs on the basis of their aspiration. It is not enough to go and you know, dig, you know, build, a, for instance, a health facility in a community that only requires, you know, bar old water to drink. It is not enough to go and build you know, a supermarket in a community where all is required is a basic health center. So the government must open the culture of communicating with the people, seek their opinion <laughs> before implementing programs. This will help the government to meet with the you know, meet up with the aspiration of the people. You may have beautiful ideas, but when implementing them and they are not in line with the aspiration of the people, then your 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 your, your programs are they become as useless as. You know, not doing anything at all. So I want to implore 
that the governor must take governance back to the people, implement its programs and policies on the basis of the needs of the people. Okay. And that is the way to go. Okay, Mr. Rashid, I was, um, our time is up actually. I was, I was disappointed when I didn't hear tourism inside your five-point agenda. We know that no, uh, the, the governor... Well, yeah, maybe, it was, you, maybe it was covered in something else that I didn't hear. No, you know, if, if um, because of the time factor, if we are to go into details of our, if our, one of our major revenue generating area is tourism. Okay. We have five programs within tourism. Okay. Five programs within tourism that will be unfolded in, in, in due course. Okay. I'm, I'm, Can you permit I'm, me to clarify something before we go? Just very briefly, because the time is really up. Yes. I want to put it on record that it is a lie. Nothing like that happened. The governor never fight any DSS officer. The governor's sister is on vacation abroad. So somebody on vacation abroad cannot slap somebody in Ushubo. There was, it was just interagency rivalry between the DSS and the police. And the matter has been, has been resolved. So I just want to clarify that. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. You know why I brought up the, um, the tourism Sorry. thing? Because... The governor is from a family of entertainers, and he himself uh, is uh, the most wonderful dancer I have ever yeah, seen yeah, yeah. in this place. So we were expecting yeah, yeah. a lot to be in the entertainment industry and so many other tourism attractions, uh, or tourist attractions, rather. Well, well, five, well, five but I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. I want, to, vis I want I, to visit. I want to visit. By time we will open it to the public. Yeah. Uh, we, and we are, we are, we're now transforming our tourism. It's not just tourism. I have we are heard you. Tourism, eh, I, okay, you understand? I we have heard you. <laughs> I have heard you. Thank you very much. Well, gentlemen, that's how we're going to draw the curtain on the show today. Um, I'm really surprised that the fire with which uh, Lawson started, he, he ended just saying that, okay, Oshun can be better than now. I'm, I'm really glad about that. So, uh, my brother. He, 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 he will support a delegate to succeed. I can guarantee that. Olufemi <laughs> Lawson, uh, public affairs <laughs> analyst, also in the civil society. Thank you so much for coming on the program today. And also, Malam Rashid, you have been wonderful exposing a lot of things. We are going to take you up on that, your promise that you made to us. We'll come find out things for ourselves in Oshun State. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, that's it on Plus Politics tonight. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Do have a good evening.